Hey guys, Zelonius here. Welcome to another video on the channel. We have got another post patch updated tactics, and we're here today with honestly probably the most disgusting attacking formation in the game. One that a lot of pros seem to be running. It just gets infinite options on the attacking game. A little bit riskier defensively, but it is a top tier meta formation this year. It is the 4 3 2 1. We're going to break it down for you in this video. I'm going to show you the tactics that I run with it, tell you about the type of players I would use, give you a full rundown of it. I had someone in one of my recent videos say, how come you haven't been showing gameplay for the recent tactics videos, Zell? And I'm doing a bit of a different approach this way. I'm going really in depth on the actual tactic, fully breaking down the formation. And then next week, when I do tactics videos again, it'll be going back to showing you guys actually how to use the formation and how it looks in game. If you really want to see how I use these formations in game, I have done these tactics before on earlier on in this FIFA cycle and you can see gameplay clips in there. The attacking patterns and the way these formations play isn't any different. So you can go back and watch it on previous videos, but because it's post patch and the tactics have been updated, tweaked a fair bit, for me, I'm showing in-depth tactics explaining my thought process on that. Let's get into it then. This is the team that I've been running it with. Are you looking to improve at FIFA? Then Underdog Gaming is the place to be. Underdog Gaming is run by me, Zelonius, and Jambu, another FIFA pro who have been full-time content creators and pro players for the last six years, hitting Elite Division and Top 100 with ease every single year. We've got lots of different tiers catered to what you want, from all the way from entry-level access to a big community Discord full of people all looking to improve and get better at the game, weekly articles and videos with exclusive tips and guides and tutorials follow backs on twitter where you can dm us uh, and get full access to us coaching sessions gameplay analysis we'll be doing a spreadsheet which will be updated throughout the year with all the op meta players if you want to improve at fifa and you're serious about taking your game to the next level underdog gaming is the place to be you can find the patreon by going to patreon.com slash underdog gaming or check the link that's in the description of this video. I look forward to seeing you guys there. For this one, I am not running a more defensive version. For me, the 4 3 2 one, you don't really want to play it defensively, you want to play it more attacking. That is the way I would run it. Some formations like the 4 triple 2, the 4 2 3 1, you can play more aggressive, more defensive version of them. But for me, this formation is definitely more catered towards playing a more um, attacking variation of it, to be honest. So, I'm going to 60 width. Well, we'll look at the formation first and explain about the players you want and the depth in it. Um, depth in it. Uh, players you want and how, what type of players you need to put in there and how the formation works. So, the strengths in this formation is you've got three attackers, two centre forwards and a striker. That is really good and one of the reasons it works so well on this FIFA compared to previous ones is on this FIFA... Simply put, through balls are broken, they're OP, so having basically three strikers to run onto them is really good. No other formation really has three central players this high up the pitch, so having three players who can run onto through balls gives you lots of options, makes it very hard for people to defend. Whereas, like I said, no other formation really has that strength in itself. Um, one of the weaknesses of this formation is it doesn't have as much natural width as some others. If you make the two outside centre forwards go out wide, you don't really get much in the middle. So you want them in the middle. So the only way to really get width in this formation is with the fullbacks. I'll show you how you use the fullbacks in the tactic. There's a bit of a nifty trick that pros have been doing to kind of make this formation work a lot better. Um, for the free midfield, that's pretty good at keeping the ball. I think this formation would be even better if the centre mid, not the left or right, but the middle one, was a CDM. Because I think CDMs do help a little bit more with defending. Um, it's still got a flat back four, which is really nice. It's definitely not defensively up there for one of the best. But going forward, it is one of the very best this year. And honestly, like it's one of the few formations when I play against it. I just hate playing against it because I'm like, I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to defend this. Because they just have so many options. And on this game where cutbacks and overlaps are so um, OP, it's very hard to play against. For the tactics... We're running press after possession loss. If you've watched it in my recent videos, I've been saying there's two ways to really play post-patch. You can either play more defensive with balanced or drop back and low depth, 
or more aggressive risky, which is what I'm tending to do, and go press after possession loss with higher depth. Um, I think this formation is really good for that because you can win the ball high up the pitch and then get in behind quickly with the free attackers. Balanced direct passing, I go that in pretty much every formation that I run. For me, balanced and direct just work really well in um, synergy together. The width in this formation, I'm playing it quite a bit lower than I do in some. I want more of my dominance to come through the middle in this one, so I don't want the two outside centre force to push too wide. And players in box, because it's already pretty attacking, I don't want to go too high and make it almost too aggressive and leave myself exposed. So for the actual players you want, centre-backs, just go for the standard top centre-backs. I've talked about that a lot recently. Fast acceleration, able to turn quick, high defending, good physical. For the full-backs, you'll see when we get to the instructions, either you want at least one of them to be very good going forward. Generally speaking, the best full-backs always are going to be good at that. And then you still want the natural pace, physicality, all that type of stuff. The middle centre mid in this one needs to be good at defending. That's where I put my best defensive midfielder in the team, or the one who I least want to go forward. Um, in this team, we've got Ribery playing right centre mid. He's not the ideal right centre mid, but it's pretty nice to have a centre mid, left or right, who's got the outside side of the foot shot trait and can go forward. Because if they can do that, then you've got that Traveller shot from deep. That's really useful. So a great left centre mid in this formation would be the Lucas Paqueta um, road to the knockout card. Ribery isn't the ideal one because he's not as well-rounded in midfield. But if you can get a right centre mid who's a good attacking midfielder who can shoot, that's really nice. For the left centre forward, that's where Alawira is. But both centre forwards outside ones, you want a lot of pace. These guys are going to be getting in behind more than the middle one. Lots of pace, being able to chip them in behind. If they can have the outside the foot shot trait, that's definitely a plus. Allows them to get the Travellers in a lot more. But you need pace in this formation. This formation really relies on that. And then the standard weak foot skills, dribbling, shooting, all that type of stuff. And then for the middle striker, you want your tallest one there. He's the one who's going to hold the ball up a bit more. So strength's quite useful. He's going to win a lot more flick-ons. And then ideally a five-star weak foot. So he can shoot on either foot, pass on either foot to either of the outside centre forwards. For the instructions, we're going to stay central, stay forward on the middle striker. Get in behind, stay forward on the outside centre forward on the left. If, well, you'll see here, I've got comeback on defence, getting behind on the right centre forward. And this is because of this. My right back has joined the attack and my left back has stay back while attacking. For some reason in this formation, I don't even know if I figured this out, if you have one of the outside centre forwards on comeback on defence, it kind of makes the formation defend like a 4-4-2, which is way, 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 way better at defending than this one. So putting one of the centre uh, forwards on comeback on defence allows you to do that, and you can get join the attack on the fullback because you can get away with that a bit more. If your left back was the one who was much better going forward, then you'd put him on join the attack, and put your left um, centre forward on comeback on defence. So interchange it based on that. Getting behind on both of these because we want them making those runs in. We don't want them on balance width. We don't want them to stay so central that we don't get any width at all. The middle centre mid is on stay back while attacking plus cover centre. We want him to be like an anchor man in the middle of the pitch. We don't want him running out of position. We want him to stay there. He can always be a reliable option to go back to to retain possession. It's nice to have a centre mid who can ping the ball about as well because he's going to get a lot of the ball so he can distribute well. For the outside centre mid, cover wing, balanced attack. Um, that's pretty standard. I think that is the default. And then for the centre backs, stay back while attacking. If you want to be more risky, you can go step up. It depends how you want to play. This formation is so attacking anyway, it's a little bit risky to go step up. For the keeper, I always go comes across as sweeper keeper. Don't think it does a lot. I don't think you'd know as much if you had cautious or balanced on the uh, saving outside box. But I go with that just in case because I like the keepers coming off the line because they're pretty OP for that. But yeah, this honestly is a great formation. It's so attacking. It's, it's a bit more risky than some. But if you want a lot more attacking options, you want to overwhelm your opponent, you want to get in behind a lot with pace, this formation's great. It probably suits the pay-to-win teams a little bit more. Not going to lie. But it's a top-tier formation. 
A lot of pros are running it, and I have big issues when it comes to playing against it. And if I find formation tactic annoying to play against, it probably means it's pretty good. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of this formation and tactic. Appreciate you guys. Keep it spicy. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.